Hey everyone, we're back in the workshop for another build. Today is less of an engineering build and more of a look at an incredible surface coating and it is an example of nanotechnology. Today, we are looking at super hydrophobic coatings. What is that? Good question. Now, I want to dive right in and see this in action before we start taking a closer look at what's going on, but here it comes. If you like this video, please help us keep creating ways to experience Curiosity from home with a donation today at curiosity.org. Thank you. Now let's take a look at what is going on with these super hydrophobic coatings. Pie pan. Water. Not too exciting, but this is no ordinary pie pan. This pie pan's been coated everywhere except that little square in the middle with a super hydrophobic coating. So what happens if I add a little bit of water to it? Let's find out. Oh, wow. I mean, look at that. I have never seen water behave quite like that. Now in the middle, where there's no coating, the water seems a little more attracted to that area. So let's build up some water on that. And look at that. It almost takes on the shape of that uncoated area. That is wild. What's really interesting about this technology in these coatings is it's actually an example of biomimicry as well. You can find this same phenomenon in nature. So I have an assistant who I think would love to take a closer look at this with me and we'll take a look at some of those naturally occurring examples as well. So let's dive right into that. Now, before we dive into the actual experiment with my assistant, we have to do two things. First of all, we actually have to apply some coating to some different materials for testing. But I also wanted to spend a minute talking about exactly what these coatings are. So I mentioned that you can find super hydrophobic surfaces on certain natural materials, and that is true. Scientists have spent years studying the surface of the leaf of the lotus plant because it's a super hydrophobic surface. And you can actually find super hydrophobic surfaces on other plant materials, even things you might find at the grocery store or around your house. For example, this rose blossom. Rose petals are super hydrophobic. So how does that work? Well, if you were able to zoom in on these rose petals with an electron microscope, you'd see that they are actually covered in thousands and thousands of tiny pillars. Now these microscopic structures actually contribute to the super hydrophobicity of the surface. What happens is when a water droplet lands on these microscopic pillars, the surface contact between the rose petal and the droplet of water is minimized. So the droplet just rolls right off. So how does that translate into an industrial coating that you can apply to all sorts of materials? Well, super hydrophobic coatings are essentially a nanoscopic layer whose primary job is to repel water. And usually industrial super hydrophobic coatings are a composite. They're made up of multiple parts. One part actually contributes to low surface energy. Now what that does is it reduces the molecular attraction between the droplet of water and the surface. The other part of the composite actually adds that microscopic surface texture, making it super hydrophobic. So surface texture, microscopic surface texture, is really important in super hydrophobicity. So we're going to be using this composite material today. It's two steps. You spray it on and you get a super hydrophobic surface. So I'm going to go around and select some different materials and just try them. Let's try all kinds of things and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have selected my materials and I thought what better way to put this to the test than to choose some things that normally would just eat up water. They would soak it up because they're so absorbent. So we have a concrete block and I've masked half of it with blue tape so that we will be coating one half and leaving the other half uncoated for comparison. I have a piece of cardboard. 
I have a terry cloth towel and another piece of some kind of fabric that's very thin, I think maybe even synthetic fabric. Um, and I have something in mind for that. So we're gonna be coating these starting with step one. I've got my breathing protection. I'm also doing this outside. It's a little windy today, but I'll just try to spray in between gusts of wind. Normally better to spray when it's not so windy, but that's okay. Um, so we're gonna get this going and uh, yeah, and then we'll have to coat step two after that. So we have cardboard, regular old cardboard, right? Yeah. Do you want to check it out? Does it, does it pass inspection? Nope. Not even a drop. Okay. Well, we're going to put a drop on it. This is a towel, terry cloth towel. You want to check it out? There's nothing inside it. There's nothing inside it. Nothing up my sleeve. All right. So what do you think is going to happen if we drip some water on these materials? I don't know. Maybe disappear. Will the water... Here, you want to... You know how to use one of these? Yep. Oops, a pipette. We, we, we use these at school sometimes for us to paint with. If we're oh, making pictures yeah. pictures that have dots. Perfect. So you know all about a pipette. You want to put some on the cardboard? Not yet. I'm not all ready. Here. You're not ready yet? I'm ready. Here, I'll put some... Hmm. Oh, I'm running out. Put some more. What's happening? Can you put some more on the towel and the cardboard for me? I'm trying to soak in that much. Get some more water. Well, look how full I am. Mm. Does it soak right in? Yep. It does. And I don't think this one does it. Well, some is sitting on. It's, it's like a spring. Let's see the towel again. Get a little more. There we go. Okay, let's see. Definitely soaks in. Let's try the towel. I'm just soaking a lot. Definitely soaks in. The cardboard, what do you notice about the cardboard? Some is staying on. Some is staying on. Do you want to, why don't you take the cardboard and tilt it so the water slides off and let's see what it looks like. Just tilt it off, I want to see what the cardboard looks like. Okay, now put it back down. Whoa! Is it wet? You want to feel it? Definitely wet. Some of the water kind of sticks to the cardboard, right? And even soaks in, maybe, a bit. What do you think? cool one but is that it what well I, I have coat? some other materials for you what if you try this piece of cardboard ah! and this towel and put some food coloring on it why don't you start with clear water and then we'll play with some food coloring water i love food coloring i have to dry it on the towel for a minute whoa the what? water stays on. <laughs> What's happening? The water stays on. Whoa! It looks like a movie! What do you think? Here, poke the water. Whoa, whoa! Try the cardboard. Let's see what the cardboard does. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Where did that water go? Come back, water. Whoa! Whoa! Nice. Gotcha! What do you think is going on on here? What kind of towel is this that the water doesn't even soak in? Does it even come off? Yep. Surely does. 
<laughs> what kind of towel do you think we have here? I don't know, but I'm but I'm really confused. Are you? Well, do you want me to explain what what I did to these materials? What? So these materials have have something called a super hydrophobic coating on them. Do you know what that means? What? It means hydrophobic means water fearing. That means water fused to go in? Well, it, it's water repellent. So this pie pan has this same material on it that those towel and cardboard had everywhere except that square. So why don't you add a little water in by squeeze the bottle. Oh, and look in the middle. Does the water kind of stay? Mm-hmm. All right, that's enough for now. Why don't you shake the pan around? Kind of looks like jello. <laughs> it does kind of look like jello. I love jello. Who doesn't love jello? Some spill. Mm -hmm. Now, look at this. You can Whoa. bounce the water and it almost like breaks into pieces. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, that's wet. And you can poke it, push it around. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It doesn't even feel like anything, except it feels like tape. And look at that in the middle, how it stays on the square. Yeah, the middle. The square is so moist. All right, before we talk about this, I have one more thing to... Oh, this is just so interesting. Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, does it smell good? All right, can you do me a favor and pluck a few petals off of that, off the out... Like, go for the... Ooh, that's good. Can you get some of the big ones around the outside edge? Okay. Let's go to our green water here. We've got some still in our hydrophobic, super hydrophobic pan. And then, oh, can and I? Do, yeah, can please. I do it? Of course you can. Squeeze some water up for me. Put a drop on, on um, yeah, one of these ones for me. Ooh, well, did you see how the water slid off? Mm -hmm. Does that look familiar to you? Mm -hmm. Let's try some on a leaf. Try some on a leaf. Let's see what happens here. Let's put this leaf here. Whoa, it becomes dark green. Does it slide off? The same way? Um, sort of. Maybe not quite as effective as the petal did. It's a little wetting out on the surface. That is interesting. Good. So here, it said Raiden, just kidding. Two pieces of material. This one has no coating on it. This one has a coating. Now, instead of putting water on these, what would you say if I put some I chocolate syrup? I chocolate syrup. <laughs> Whoa, too cold. It's cold. So what do you think will happen if I drip some on the fabric? I don't know. All right, so here's the uncoated. Okay, you gotta let the camera see. That smells chocolate. Ooh. Mm. Now let's try the coated and that see one what falls. happens. Whoa! 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 It falls all the way down. <laughs> Whoa! Look at that. He's squishing. That is crazy. This one falls down faster, and this one falls down melty slow. Well, I think it doesn't even fall down. This one, I think it's gonna stain that material. It's absorbing into the fibers. But this one... It just slides down. Is it gonna go back? Oh, here it goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, don't pour it out the grass! I won't. And it slides back down doesn't go into the material at all. That is pretty impressive, I have to say. So what do you think about these 
super hydrophobic coatings. Good, everyone. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Okay, so how fun was that? I mean, that chocolate syrup was pretty unexpected. I have to say, that is pretty wild to see how that just rolled off of the coated material. And the proof is right here. I mean, look at that. The uncoated sample of material looking very unglamorous. And the coated is completely unscathed. That is wild. Now, there are two more experiments I want to try. So we'll try those here in the workshop. And one of them was that concrete block that I masked half of and I sprayed the other half. Let's do a quick comparison test of that. And then I have one other idea for some super hydrophobic art. So let's go try it. So here we are with our concrete block. Now, some of you may be noticing we have a special guest appearance in the workshop today. This is a portion of the fog bubble machine. That's right. We have made a video about a machine that Curiosity has that fills bubbles with fog. It is very cool. So if it's out, go watch it. If it hasn't been released yet, stay tuned and check back here to see that in the future. But thank you, Fog Bubble Machine, for donating a portion of yourself for this experiment. And um, given how the terry cloth towel performed, which was probably the most absorbent material we had in our little test. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any real surprises here, but it's still going to be a fascinating comparison to see how the coated and uncoated portion of the concrete does. And this stuff is always fascinating to see how it performs. So let's take a look. All right, we will remove the masking. Oh, you can see there's a little difference between the what the just the visual appearance of the uncoated concrete versus the coated looks like. The coated is a shade darker. Um, but uh, let's add water and see how this looks. I mean, like I said, not a big surprise there. The water just sheds off of the coated area. Let's get a closer look.
So I have to say, seeing how those different coated surfaces on the concrete performed was pretty incredible. And uh, this is our last experiment for the day here. This is my idea for um, super hydrophobic art. So we have some selectively masked sprayed on coating here on a piece of acrylic, and we have purple dyed water. Oh, and it's already sprinkling onto our surface. So let's continue and see what happens. There you have it. Our lovely logo rendered almost completely in simple water. With a little help from super hydrophobic coatings. I mean, wow. I have to say, those super hydrophobic coatings are pretty amazing. Remarkable. Now there's all sorts of interesting industrial applications for coatings like this. One of the more well-known ones is actually satellite dishes. They'll coat satellite dishes with super hydrophobic coatings so that water doesn't build up on them and cause rust and oxidation and other issues. So what ideas might you have for an application for a coating like this? Let us know, leave us a comment. But that was super fun. I hope you all had as much fun as I did. So thanks again for watching, and please help us to keep creating science exhibits and zoo programs you can enjoy at home with a donation today at curiosity.org. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.